On June 30th, 2001, NASA launched the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, on the Delta II launcher. The goal of WMAP was to refine our knowledge of the early universe, which would in turn inform our theories of fundamental physics. WMAP determined the age of the universe to better than 1% precision, provide a more accurate measure of the expansion rate of the universe, the Hubble constant, and is one source of the knowledge of the content of the universe. The probe itself is as you see here, with the microwave receptors at the top and a 5 meter base which actually consists of webbing between the probe's solar panels, meant to shield the instruments from interference from solar photons. After all, what WMAP is trying to detect is light that has been stretched by the expansion of the universe over the course of 13.7 billion years, so that it's no longer in the visible spectrum, but now all the way down in the microwave wavelengths, the cosmic microwave background. And it seeks to do this with a much greater precision than its predecessor, COBE. In the early universe, everything was so densely packed that light particles could not get loose, they kept bumping into other particles. It was only after 380,000 years from the start of the universe that it had grown large enough for light to stop scattering. The photons detected by WMAP have been traveling uninterrupted since that time, only to finally bump into our probe. It's sort of awesome to think about. Turning now to the launcher for this mission, the Delta II 7425, we see that the boosters, the four boosters, are in an interesting configuration. Instead of being perfectly symmetrical, one of them is offset. I have no idea why that should be. If anyone knows, please mention it in the comments to this video. I mentioned that because I did not mimic that positioning of the boosters on my replica, since I doubted that the simulation would respond well to it. As we will soon see, the launch program inputted through KOS here in Kerbal Space Program will already have trouble controlling my version, overdoing the gimbal on the main engine, the RS-27A. We do have video of the real launch, as well as original commentary during the first stage burn, so let's turn to that now, and I'll talk more about the mission afterwards. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Pop and go. Water go. 10, 9, 8, 7, igniter's arm, green board, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, main engine start, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with the MAP spacecraft, exploring the past and future of our universe. The guidance system has started, this program is in, the old program is in. Initially, smooth flight being reported. Solid motors are now at maximum thrust. T plus 30 seconds. Flight looking good. We've just gone through the sound barrier. Normal, normal vibrations. First stage control looks good. Vehicle on course. Through the transonic region now, standing by for solid rocket booster burnout. And solid motor jettison. We have all four solid motors have jettisoned. The two disturbances look good at jettison. All the disturbances have been damped out. Yeah. We have an altitude of 15 nautical miles, downrange distance 31 nautical miles, and a velocity of 2,500 miles an hour. These systems continue to look good. Stage one guidance has come in. Stage 
engine and burners continue to burn well. We're passing T plus 166 seconds, and the vehicle is climbing out down the center of the range corridor. Base systems continue to look good. Vehicle pneumatic and electrical systems are normal. Three minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. T plus 190 seconds. We are now at an altitude of 37 nautical miles, downrange distance 123 nautical miles, and a velocity of 6,100 miles per hour. The controls are still looking very smooth as we fly into the thin ionosphere. Plus 220 seconds. Approaching the maximum skin temperature on the vehicle. Next uh, event is a Miko coming up in about 30 seconds. That's first stage main engine cutoff. Main engine and burnings continue to do well. Chamber pressures look nominal there. Passing 255 seconds. We have our fuel float switch, rocks float switch, and we have enabled Miko. And we have Miko. The main engine has cut off. Both burning airs looking good. So there we have second stage ignition, which probably wouldn't have occurred so quickly after first stage separation. The first stage burned for 4 minutes and 25 seconds, burning kerosene and liquid oxygen, and the AJ-10 in the second stage will burn for a further 7 minutes and 11 seconds, burning aerosene, which is a 50-50 mix of hydrazine and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, UDMH, with a nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. This will get WMAP and the third stage to orbit, after which the solid third stage, the Star 48B, will boost the probe on a slingshot of the moon that will send the probe to the L2 point. L2 is one of the Lagrange points where orbital motion and the gravity of the Earth and the Sun are balanced, so that WMAP could orbit the point for nine years or so, with only minor adjustments using its hydrazine thrusters. I mentioned earlier the phase in expansion where photons stopped bumping into particles 380,000 years ago and were finally free to travel until they bumped into something like WMAP. This happens with light from the sun as well. Light released from the core of the sun takes 200,000 years or so to reach what we see as the surface of the sun. That surface is actually the photosphere, the region where light is finally emitted. And for a given type of star, the photosphere will have a very definite temperature based on the Stefan Boltzmann law and a very definite spectrum. That is true of the early universe as well, and even after being stretched by the expansion of the universe, the photons that make up the cosmic microwave background have an extremely narrow range of temperatures. The maps of the background produced by WMAP use very highly contrasting colors to represent what are actually minute differences. And here we should be coming up on the third stage cutout. There we have it. And so the third stage is out, and the probe is in orbit. Here we're coming up on the separation of the second stage, and after that there will be the phasing orbits, and then the third stage, the solid rocket motor, will attempt to boost this probe out to the lunar flyby. Now, Kerbal Space Program does not have Lagrange points because it only has two-body physics. It does not have three-body physics. So when I lit the third stage motor, all I wanted to do was A, keep the craft stable, because I've had trouble with that with the solid rocket motors, and also to get it on its lunar flyby. So the goal was a lunar flyby, and I was seeing whether I could do this accurately enough to at least uh, fly by the moon. And uh, here we see a flame, and I like to think that it would have looked like this. It's certainly much more dramatic, but I'm not entirely sure that the actual boost would have looked uh, more, quite a lot like a comet, actually. This is actually a very powerful SRB. It has a 66 kilonewton thrust compared to the second stage, which only had 43.6 kilonewtons. So it's actually more powerful than the second stage, but only burns for 87 seconds. It's about to run out here, and of course SRBs continue until they run out of fuel. You can't stop them. And so the trick to hitting the trajectory that you want is to have a useless radial component to the burn that will waste some of the extra fuel that you will have. 
The next phase of the operation is of course dumping that third stage rocket motor and so we'll see that here. And after doing that, the solar panels would extend. In this case, however, I didn't have the webbing between the solar panels, and also my solar panels were much larger than the ones on the actual probe, so they ended up with a much broader diameter. The probe had uh, smaller solar panels compared to this, and so you can see in the diagram below there uh, what it would actually have looked like. The purpose of the webbing and also putting the solar panels on the bottom, of course, was to shield the instruments from interference from the Sun as well as from Earth uh, because the Sun and the Earth once the probe is at the L2 point will be in line with each other and you can see that from this diagram here unfortunately without n-body physics in Kerbal Space Program I can't model for you what actually happens with the probe as it orbits the L2 point in this simulation with WMAP on its way here though, I think it's a good time to turn to some of its other contributions. And first of all, we'll have the words of the principal investigator for this mission, Dr. Charles Bennett. A brand new discovery from, from these observations is that we have detected the era where the very first stars in the universe ignited. And this era was, uh, for many, surprisingly early. It's only about 200 million years after the Big Bang from, from the time that you had this intense uh, concentration of, uh, of all kinds of exotic particles, the time when gas clouds could form and condense and form stars. So we, we've, we've detected that era for the first time, and, and it is very early. Well, because it takes the light over 13 billion years to reach us, we are seeing now what the universe looked like then over 13 billion years ago, so it's a, it's a fossil remnant of, of what the early universe was like, and just uh, like fossils were used to study the past, we use this light to study what the universe was like uh, way back near the, near the very beginning. And one thing that we've learned is that the early universe is ridiculously uniform, and so all theories about cosmology have to take into consideration how that happened, how did the universe become so uniform and yet still have clumpiness to produce galaxies. Another fact that we've learned is that the early universe was composed of different stuff. We now have a lot more dark energy, which is associated with the expansion of the universe. And so dark energy will continue to grow as the universe expands faster and faster. So there you have it, WMAP helping to refine the results of COBE to verify some theories of cosmology and physics, dismissing other theories that do not involve accelerated expansion and an initial high energy inflation, working on this project, until 2010 when it was finally pushed out of L2 and decommissioned after nine years in service. Thank you for watching this presentation of Today in Space History for June 30th on the WMAP mission and all non-Kerbal Space Program footage in this video was courtesy of NASA.